Facebook, lots of people love Facebook, see pictures of their friends' babies and their trips, so they keep in touch with folks maybe they haven't seen for years. Did Facebook do something wrong here? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so I, I think, um, uh, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so first of all, um, you know, I think that um, Facebook hasn't been wholly candid with, with what it knew when and what, um, how much did it tolerate the projects that were happening because it, it actually approved the terms and conditions of the application. So before, um, before the data harvesting began, Facebook was notified with a new set of terms and conditions that said this data is going to be pulled, this is how it's going to be pulled, um, and it's going to be commercialized, transferred, and sold. And this happens before it this, collect on 87 this, million people. This happens before, and they approved it. Now, the CTO of Facebook at the British Parliament a couple weeks ago said that they may not have read the terms and conditions <laughs> before they approved it. It would be so, like all of us, though. And so we the, always do that. The irony of a company that says, oh, well, you've got these users that sign these terms and conditions, so they agree for us to do whatever we want with their data, don't even read terms and conditions of applications that then take that data also. And it's because, you know, fundamentally, part, there's, a, there's an aspect of, of Facebook's business model, which is that it, it, that doesn't involve privacy. When you take, you have to remember, when you're taking data off of Facebook, whether it is legitimately or illegitimately, that data often is just used to optimize Facebook advertising. So, and which is what happened with Cambridge Analytica. So, you know, I, I suspect that Facebook turned the, you know, turned the other way when it was happening because ultimately they make money off of it. Um, this is why when you think about f even the very layout of Facebook, the likes page, right? When was the last time you ever went onto the likes page? When was you ever looked at your own likes or somebody else's likes? Probably pretty rarely. When have you scrolled down all of the likes? Probably pretty rarely. So you've got all these features that make it really easy to scrape profiles that have no actual utility for users. Um, and Facebook has designed, so Facebook has designed their entire platform to just make data very easily available. But, but don't not, we give them their that, data? That's not to say that, you know, they're doing it intentionally, you know, so no, that But we're giving can... it to them, right? What, what, how, how are they acting wrongly if we're just giving them all this data? Shouldn't they use it however they want? No, because that's like saying, you know, should I, I should be able to, that I should be able to build a building with no fire exits um, because it ruins the concept of my, you know, aesthetic. And, and, if, and, and so long as I put terms and conditions outside of the building that says you might burn alive, it's up to those people. If they burn alive, so be it. Um, they wanted to see my conceptual building. You know, the thing, the, thing, the thing that's really important, I think, for people to understand is that we, so in modern society, what, what job uh, can you get where you refuse to use the internet, right? It is the new electricity. Right? So when people sign up to terms and conditions, it's, it's sort of a, it's a false choice because it's like saying, well, you can if you don't want to get electrocuted, don't use electricity and go be a hermit in, in the mountains somewhere. Right? It's not a real choice. And so I'm, it's not even what is Facebook doing wrong or what they're doing, what they're doing right or you know, should people just leave Facebook? It's like, well, if you leave Facebook, you're still, you're still on Google, you know, you're still using Twitter, you're still using Uber, you're still using everything to do with modern society involves the collection and harvesting of data. And so we should not be thinking about it through the lens of this false consent in terms and conditions. We should be thinking about it like we do for everything else that's important in our lives, whether it's food, medicine, cars, whatever, in terms of safety in terms of consumer rights, that you don't actually have a real choice to use what is effectively a utility on the internet. And so whether or not you agree or don't agree on these terms and conditions that no one reads, it should be a moot point. We should be creating, as a society, a, a common set of standards that apply universally to whatever technology company it is that, that says, this is what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do with data full stop.